that. Well, sorry about the gridding on my window, but yeah, it's a really cloudy day today. Perfect day for a read. Get some light in here. Hello, hello there. Good morning. I am vlogging when I said I wasn't going to, but yeah, we are. And I have no idea how good this camera angle is since I'm using my underwater camera, but hello guys. Hope you all are amazing. And if you are nuts, I hope my video puts a smile on your beautiful faces and makes you laugh. Welcome to my read along readathon vlog. You know, I used to be really, really confident doing vlogs. Now I'm just not that fully confident anymore. It used to be great being able to go out and doing vlogs. There's an old vlog here on my channel, but I mostly did it with a friend. And I'm not that super confident, so I'm just gonna sit down. Oh my goodness, hopefully the camera angle isn't too dodgy. Got my Eevee cup. Do, 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 do. Mm. Oh, that's so good. So, okay. So currently it is, well, I got up about, I think, before nine I did. I, wa I did start my readathon last night as soon as it passed midnight because <laughs> I was in the middle of watching a new romance anime, a live, love, chibia, and other delusions. Love, love, chibia, and other delusions, sorry. Which yeah, was is super super cute. I was so glad I started watching it, and um, I started reading this. Get my camera angle all right. I started reading Devil. Look at look. Oh, hang on, hang on. I started reading Devil's Line. <gasps> yes. I thought I had to start off with this because somebody commented on my Instagram saying it's really really sexy. And I was like, right, that's all I needed to know. And um, I only got halfway through it, hence the bookmark. So I'm going to read through the rest of it along with my breakfast. And um, I will update you guys on my thoughts current over volume one. See you in a bit. Checking in, checking out. I just finished finished reading Devil's Line, and oh my goodness, to that person on Instagram who said that this was going to be very sexy. It is. I'm not going to say the word dark. Um, this series was a bit intense. Um, to start off with, there was already just a lot of blood and gore, and I'm just like, wow. Okay. Devil's Line centers on, if you don't know what Devil's Line is about, Devil's Line centers on these breed of vampires known as devils who are half human, half devil. And um, it also centers on a particularly the two protagonists, which are um, Anzai and Sukasa, and their relationship, because this is a romance-based vampire, if that was not obvious. And it focuses on how, this volume focuses on how these two meet. Everything kind of happened really, really fast between Anzai and Sukasa so far, the introduction of their characters, and it's not really established if they're dating or not right now. Everything's kind of stuck in limbo, but I really liked it. Uh, there's this connection that Anzai and An and Sukasa both have together, because um, they're both very, well, never really experienced romance, so they're going to be like totally newbies. And it's interesting in this volume that it is legal in this world setting that um, you can have, well, it's legally to have sex with 
um, these devils in human society. So it's just like a normal legal thing, which I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Honestly, I have to mention, when I look at Anzai's face, the dark circles under his character design, God, it makes him look like he's either just drunk too much or he's on drugs. <laughs> but um, Devil's Line has definitely piqued my interest. It really, really has. Um, I like where the story's going. Um, that there are these devils being killed. I'm so really thrilled mainly to see where Anzai and Sukasa's relationship goes because they are so both socially awkward, even though it doesn't matter that Anzai is half human, half devil. And I like the interesting concept of vampires in here um, is that, like with um, Sirius the Jaeger, that in that vampire show, the vampires are dying from mysterious illness, which was a nice added different plot line to a vampire series this one um instead of like you know when vampires in mythology you know drink blood you know it satisfies them this in this story the devils the vampires go into this crazy crazy mode they do they just absolutely go outrageously crazy they lose control and um Interestingly, our protagonist, Anzai, has never tasted human blood, so I feel like I've already revealed too much about Devil's Line, but Devil's Line is so, like, alluring is the best thing to say, and I'm so going to have it in my collection. So, I definitely, if you love your vampire stuff, definitely Devil's Line is just something that keeps you on edge. I was kept on edge. And so, that is for Devil's Line. My next read is going to be... I decided Tokyo ESP because it was the closest on my pile. And um, if I probably won't check in until a bit later because I'm going to go do a workout now. And I'm probably going to go wash my dog because he stinks. So I'll check in with you guys a bit later. Bye. <coughs> bath time. <gasps> he knows it's bath time. Or he thinks it's walkie time. <gasps> but can he go for a bath? <laughs> He always does this. Are we gonna give her a bath? Ooh! You chasey chasey mode, aren't you? He never brings the ball here. His recoil is crap. Come here! Come on! Run away! I'm just gonna run away the whole time, so we'll go round and round and round. Oh, okay. You don't wanna play? You wanna bath? You wanna bath? ignore how my bloody hair looks. Oh, I should actually shut the door. I'm just checking in because it's been about, uh, about about three hours since I even vlogged anything. It is currently, what time is it? Let me look on my phone. It is nearly 2.30. I've not read anything since um, 10.30 this morning because, yeah, had to go wash my dog, did that, I've just done a workout, which hence why I'm all uh, out of breath a bit, so I'm going to go have a shower, and I'm going to eat, and then I'm finally going to sit down and read the rest of my manga, whatever I can actually get through. So yeah, I'll check in with you guys in a bit. Bye! Hey, Meow! You're not going to come help me read some books for the readathon, are you? Oh! Sleepy boy. Hey, hey, checking back in again with you guys. It's been a bit. Um, I finally did have some food. I had a salad and I finally exercised and now I am in my comfort zone. I love to come read in my lounge room. Um, it's just so cool in here and it doesn't get overly too hot and it's just such a nice space in the house to actually read. I do like reading in my room, but whenever this room is free, since I live with other family, um, it's hard for when this room is actually, you can get it to yourself. So yeah. So I have, I have all of my books here. I'm ready to get through as many as I can and also just of interest for anybody. Currently, that's non-manga, because I recently got back into reading other books. Um, I've been started Ash Princess, which is by Laura Sebastian. So far, I've only got like 12 pages in, maybe two days ago I started reading this. And it's really, really captivating already. So, 
so much going on, but yes, obviously that is not manga related. And um, I don't know if you guys do, but I love having music while I'm reading. Sometimes there are people that don't really like watching, or I mean, sorry, there are people that don't like listening to music while they're reading, but I love it. I've only listened to, like, instrumentals, and I recently, recently for the past probably, like, one or two months, I've been constantly listening to nothing but the free uh, the free Dive into the Future original soundtrack. I love me some free, and I it's one of my favorite things about free the all the original soundtracks. They're just so soothing to listen to, make me think like I'm in the water, and that I just it's so urban and funky. But yeah, without further ado, I'm gonna get reading to what my next read is gonna be because currently right now it is nearly four o'clock. <laughs> So I've only got so many hours to digest all of this um, pile of manga. So yeah, Tokyo ESP, here we come. there just checking in with you guys and look look i got some free music still going yeah the free music still going ah uh, this readathon is not going how i has planned because i know i said i had no plans but then there was the detour of going to wash my dog and then fitting in a workout but i finally finished um tokyo esp and i actually found out what esp means this was a really fun really fun read like really fun um the story is actually just getting going from this big volume one reading this took me a fair while at least 40 minutes a good solid 40 minutes along with some interruptions but um the story of this um focuses on a girl named Rinka who is very poor she lives with her dad and the only family that she actually has is her dad she works part-time as a waitress after school and um, she sees one day these glowing fish in the sky and she touches one and then she ends up getting a superpower and these superpowers are known as ESP ESP and um, they are called because I had to look it up on my tablet thing um, extra extra sensory perception it, or it's like a sixth sense so Rinka's power she can um, go walk through walls pretty much you know walk through any object go through any object so she can dissolve herself into anything except people so you know if she wanted to go rob a bank all she had to do is would be walk through walls so it's really really cool she ends up befriending a um dude from her high school named azuma who has the power to teleport and superhuman strength and he wears a crow's um, face mask thing which is quite hilarious throughout the read it was and um, there's like Yakuza setting in this and um, there is a bigger plot that goes on in this series I really like I just like how this series has gone so far and especially the perspective of this volume of Rinka you know taking on the responsibility of these powers and him and her and Azuma taking on the responsibility of being like these heroes of justice which the pair don't really consider themselves um really any well they don't really consider themselves you know heroes and um there's a bigger picture that somebody wants to you know um put these put these um the ESP or you know put use these golden fish that give people these powers by touching them it's really random that part of the ploys and um try and turn other humans into these ESP superhumans or turn them into superhumans and put them on the black market and sell people so there is a bigger like you know scandal going on and um it's and I also like there is I think there is the romance element in this, even though it was not strong in this volume of volume one. Um, I know it's there. It's going to happen between Azuma and Rinka. I think it's going to be a really sweet bond that these pair build. So I'm definitely going to continue this series. I loved, I just love the superhuman power 
element in this series. It was just a really fun read. That is Tokyo ESP, and now I'm fine. I should tell you who it's by. I had a Jima Sega Segoe. Segoe, or I think some of yeah, Segoa. Because some of the labels covering up the last letter. Um, I would definitely look up these authors and their other works, definitely. But now moving on from that, put that down on the pile. I've got myself quite a setup right now. So now I'm moving on to my next read. I need something lovey-dovey because the last two have been, well, lovey-dovey, but a bit like full on. We're gonna read short cake cake. So I'll check in with you guys in a bit. <laughs> And my thoughts on this volume, which should not take me very long because it's really, really short. Hi there again. I just finished reading Short Cake Cake, and sorry if the music you can hear in the background. I just finished this adorable, adorable series. I'm probably going to want to watch mushy reads for the rest of the evening. I have to see in my TBR pile if I have enough mushy titles. But um, everything everyone has said about Shortcake Cake, has they've been bang on. This has been such a cute read. I, I'm glad because the last Tokyo ESP was a bit of a mouthful to like read. But um, it's funny, what I've read so far, I haven't even commented on any art styles. Um, I'll comment on the art style of this. Uh, the art style was really simplistic and cute. I was just easy to just read all the it was just really a very easy read well along with its um art style she decides to live in the same boarding house as her friend and that's where she meets an another girl and three other boys the main boys are chiaki yato and riku and um Ten is a very, as a protagonist, she's very, very sure of herself, quite confident um, in terms of when it comes to boys, boys falling or falling in love and boys. There's been a couple of times in this volume one where she's corrected people, making it sound like she knows about love. And YouTube thing is a nightmare. And yes, I like her and I like all the other characters. Um, you know, there's Riku who's a bit of like of a, he's not really a playboy, he just likes to make girls happy, but at the same time, he wants to, you know, find the one. All of these guys really want to find the one. Chiaki, he likes reading books a lot, and then Yato, he's a bookworm. So, I like these group of characters for this series. Such an innocent read, and I cannot wait to maybe eventually when I get my hands on volumes two and three, how this ended. Ah, I was like, ah, oh, somebody's been caught out. So anybody who loves romance, yes, Shortcake Cake is the perfect pick for you. It's the perfect pick, my friends. Now, next read. I'm like trying to do a massive marathon of reads right now because currently it is what time? My phone should say. I think it's about six, it's just after six here, so I still have six hours or maybe maybe a bit more to get through my pile. So my next read I've decided is going to be Kigurami Guardians. So I'll check in with you guys in a bit on my thoughts on this. I am powering through my reads right now. But I think at some point I'm going to want to read one of those Harley Quinn comic one-shots so I can tell you guys a bit about it. So I think after this I will read one of my one-shots so yeah, I can get you guys to go read the Harley Quinn comics because they're perfect for this readathon. But anyway, probably I'll only end, this is going to be a really quick read. Look at how thin this is. So yeah, check in with you guys in a bit and probably I'll end up having dinner in a bit. So hopefully you're enjoying this reading vlog even though I think I'm great at doing vlogs. So see you in a bit. Bye. Hey there, giving you another update. I just finished Kigu Ra Kigurumi Guardians and I'm currently listening to the Blue Spring Ride original soundtrack. <gasps> It's been perfect. And um, this is how my first assumption thoughts of this little manga volume one. 
um, was it was going to be comedic. And honestly, I can give you a full opinion of it now. It's 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 wacky and it's got a definitely along the lines of Magical Girl. Reminds me of Shugachar in a way. So the story focuses on a girl named Sasa Cora who ends up coming home one day from school from admiring her, I think it was her, the, the prince of her school, just a popular guy, long hair. She comes home from school and finds this thing, which looks like a cow, like a demon cow to me. And his name is Ginger. And he tells her that she's known as a guardian. He People think that Ginger is dressed up as a kigu ram, you know, kigu rami, you know, like a onesie that you would wear or in one of those bodysuit things. And she's told she is a guardian, along with two other people, which is a popular girl named Nobunara and then a guy's name, another guy. Can't remember his name, but these three make up the guardians as um, the popular dude that, um, popular dude that Sasakura it admires and I can't remember his name. President Kagima that tells them she is a guardian and has to protect the world from this um has to protect the world from this enemy that is from a parallel world that wants to take over the world. And of course there's so much more in depth in this because the fun concept about this is that Ginger is not a this Kigurumi cow it stays underneath the because each of these um each of the guardians actually has one of these Kigurami. Um, so the girl Nobu Nobunara and the other dude have their own Kigurami's and they are able to transform. And the only way that they can transform into their human forms, partner has to kiss them. So even it's kind of weird when I'm looking at the dude on their team. He's totally okay with kissing his Kigurami, which is a dude on these. They're all dudes in these like black butler suits. And that's just so, so hilarious while I was reading this. A hilarious concept. And um, this is, this is definitely reminding me of Shu Chara because the enemy uses people as puppets, you know, grants their wishes and is after their hearts. And Shugachara focuses on um, really old magical girl, old school. Shugachara is one of my favorite magical girl anime. And that show is all about hearts as well and, you know, people's inner desires and their wishes. So these two series, Kigurami Guardians and Shugachara, have that in common. That's why this made me instantly think of Shugachara. The main protagonist, Sasa Kora, asks um, why was she chosen to be a guardian? That's because all of the, that's because um, all the guardians were seen as to have pure, pure hearts. So this was such a fun read. Oh my god. I did not think I would love it as much as I did. So I'll definitely be picking up more volumes of this because I have a feeling Ginger and Saka Sakakura are going to, well, you know, fall in love. There is a love concept in this. <laughs> like the kissing part, obviously, to make her Kigurami transform. But this is such a fun comedic read. Yes. I cannot believe I barely heard about this series. I've never heard anybody actually talk about this series. So now you guys know. And now I'm going to have to move on to my next read. God, I'm going to be so sleepy later. So sleepy. I'm trying to power through these reads. So the next one I was going to read was a Harley Quinn uh, comics thing. But I'm gonna, actually going to leave that till last. So the next one I'm going to dive into because I've got to dive into these newer titles before I start to reread is Library Wars, finally, because this is a series I've heard so many times over the years and finally I'm going to read it. I actually have the other six volumes because this series I believe is 12 volumes or more than 12 volumes. So I'll let you guys know how I go with volume one of Library Wars and I smell dinner. <laughs> really hungry. Hi there! It's been a bit since I actually um, did a little check-in with you all. Um, I got distracted. I ended up watching a bit of TV with my family. Um, but it's probably a good distraction. I've been reading for about four hours non-stop. So, but you know, I'm a slow reader. Like a slow reader. And right now, the time is... I don't know. Let me just look. On the iPad. Let me just look on for a sec. 
it is 10 o'clock, so um, I still have two hours to complete all my TBR, which I, be honest guys, I'm so doubting that I'm going to be able to complete everything on my TBR, but you know what, we're just going to squeeze in what I can, so I just finished reading Library Wars, finally, volume one, and I gotta say, this, ah, I love this, I loved this. More, so much. It has so much relation to like how I love books. I love going to the library because when I first moved here with my family, um, you know, our we moved into our rental place and all of our stuff was still on the um shipment carrier, so we had like no furniture, no nothing when we moved into our rental place. And we relied on the library a lot to like, you know, use their computers. It's just this hits home for me this series has. I remember reading this now so many years ago and I just completely forgot what this was even about. You know what? I think I stopped reading through this volume halfway through because I got bored. But I was like 15, 16 when I read this. So obviously now with a better mindset, uh, yeah. So this story focuses on our main protagonist, um, Iku Kasahara, who ever since she was a little girl dreamed of joining the Library Defense Force, a military force that opposes um, many different governments who want, who want to um, eradicate people's rights to free media that the library offers. And um, of course the, the government comes into the libraries and confiscates any material they feel is offensive or not deemed worthy for um, public access. So um, there's a lot of political drive in this to do with, you know, your rights, free speech. And um, I love the focus. This is on our protagonist, Ikuya Kasahara. Um, and she has a very hard-headed drill sergeant, which is this dude here named Dojo. And um, secretly, Takasahara Dojo, her drill sergeant, is her, you know, knight in shining armor, her prince. You know, she he's the reason she Kasahara looks up to Dojo. Um, she he's the reason she wanted to be become a library defense force. And of course, the first volume covers, you know, how he treats her. But obviously, he only wants to, you know, empower her. And he believes that she can do it, really. It's quite obvious trait um, as I was reading through this. And yes, you can see the back of me in the mirror. I'm just going to move up here. And um, I love the protagonist, Kasahara. She's, you know, very, you know, forthgoing, um, very highly driven, highly motivated. Um, to, you know, and she, you know, faced a few trials um, in this volume she did. And I know this series is pretty long, so I'm excited to see how she's going to evolve, you know, in her new role of being a library defense force. And this, this manga is just so fun. I wanted to say bloody fun then. Um, it is, it's so bloody fun. Like, just taking a concept of library and turning it into this wacky, fun, plot is just something to easily get invested into and I know that there is a bond that forms between our romance element because this is a romance read-off on. I know I remember seeing on some images years ago that these two, Dojo and Kasahara, do form a bond. You know, there was a few very cute moments in this there was uh, that I really loved. The, the moments were more of admiration, but I think that is going to slowly turn into love. But this is just the beginning, and I, this excitingly, see over, see over there, I have about the next uh, six volumes of this, so I'm going to continue reading this through the course of the next week. So I'll definitely give an update more on how I'm going with this series, but yeah, just in love. I'm, I'm, I'm in love with it. It's so fun. Um, such a fun idea to use f for a library plot. So epic. So yeah, that is Library Wars. And hopefully maybe I'll do a wrap up video, maybe talking about everything I read. But since we got two hours left for this readathon, I 
don't even know what I want to read. So I'm going to do one of um, that I said I really wanted to do a reread, which is of one of the Harley Quinn comics, one of many thousands of romance stories. And uh, I haven't read this um, in a long time, so I'll check in with you guys in a bit because it's not going to take me long. This is a one shot. So I'll let you guys know how I go with this. See you in a bit. I am getting tired now. <laughs> it is currently 10.30. Yes, so I still have an hour and a half. <sighs> probably since it hits midnight, I'm probably going to go to sleep because I am so tired. But... Um, I did finish reading this, the Harley, Harley Quinn Violet, uh, titled Response. Uh, this was a quick short read within half an hour. Ah, uh, this is what you need during a readathon. Oh, I remember, um, Shay, who is hosting this readathon, she was really excited for when I mentioned about these um, particular Harley Quinn comics, which I did some research and you can get these off of um, Amazon. Um, the ebooks are like dirt cheap, they're like $3 something. And I wanted to buy some off Google Play, which I still haven't. And I actually found some of these I can re actually borrow um, or borrow the ebooks from my local library, which is very cool. So just reading this little title, yeah, it's just so good. It's so, this one in particular was very soap opera-y. There, there was a lot of, there was an up and downs of betrayal in this. Um, the main protagonists, their names just sound so soap opera cliche type. Sienna and Alexis. Oh, it's... <laughs> And you know what, it made me crack up a couple of times reading this, but yes, full of betrayal and all the lusts of love and pretty much a lot of these type, these romance stories, ah, uh, they're all, some are all the same, some are different, but every single one is different. And, and if you didn't read, if you missed my stream that I did yesterday saying of what I was going to be reading during this TBR, look at this. These are special, these manga, these romance manga comics. They are print that this one is printed in violet ink. There are some that are also printed in pink, pink ink. So if you can get your hands on some of these Harley Quinn comics, oh my god, they are a necessity for your collection. They are such a great read, especially just before bed, because they only take like half an hour at max. So ah this is such a good reread and now we continue on my friends because <laughs> it's like only an hour and a half I have left so I have been debating what I was going to choose I was thinking about fruits basket um but I thought you know what I'm gonna say fruits basket this is a huge omnibus <laughs> It is to get through, I don't know, maybe I'll change my mind. But I decided to go with, because I wanted to continue something really, I wanted to read something quite happy. So I'm going to read Irina Tamir's newest manga she has come out with, which is Idle Dreams, and I have both volumes one and two. So hopefully I can smash this out in the next half an hour. And uh, I'll check in with you guys then. And if you are still watching this vlog, Till the end, I commend you, my friends, because I have probably been the most terrible vlogger in the world. <laughs> so I'll check in with you guys in a bit. Hey there. This is checking in for like the final time for this vlog because as of right now, it is after midnight. Ah, so sad. The readathon is complete. It is over. Oh. So yeah, I'm gonna be like, you know, whispering a bit since it's midnight and all my family's asleep. I just finished reading volume one of Idle Dreams. I didn't get around to reading volume two for the readathon, but that's okay. I'm probably gonna read volume two tomorrow. And oh my god, this was like the best way to finish this readathon. I am so happy right now. It's been so long since I've read any works by Arena Tamura. Um, I think the last thing I read from her was um, Full Moon, which was last year. And um, 
Oh my goodness, there are still, actually, thinking about it now, there's still Sakura Haim, I've only read volume one of, and I still need to read The Gentleman's Alliance as well, which is another famous one of hers. But Idle Dreams oh, is for like any romance junkie. The artwork is, Arena Tamiya's artwork is still so cute. And I just love that she's covering something so modern with a magical feel. It, it just works so well here. I'm just going to show you guys one shot of her work. So you can see and I'll just, yeah. This is like, this is why I love her. Look at that expression. Can you guys can see that expression? Yes, just she knows how to do blushing faces. This woman knows how to bring cuteness to your life. This focuses on 31 year old um, businesswoman Shikaj, um, and she's not happy with her life. She feels it's like empty and um, li living the life of an introvert. She was pretty popular when she was like 15 back in high school. And she ended up going into a class reunion where she ends up seeing her first love from high school, which was Haru. Then somebody inappropriately shouts out, she's a 31-year-old virgin who's had no boyfriend, no relationship, no nothing. So she's embarrassed as hell. And then she ends up going suicidal. She, you know, end of my life. Oh my goodness. And then... One of her child, one of her high school friends, Tokita, um, approaches her and says, "Would you like to take this experimental drug, which will revert you back to when you're 15 years old?" And uh, yeah, that's what she does. She takes the risk and she reverts back to a 15 year old Chikaj, and to live her dream of when she was 15, which was to live the dream of being an idol. So that is what she does, and this is a, such a great modern take with um mixed in with arena tamura's magicalness yeah i absolutely loved this the artwork was so good arena tamura's cuteness factor is still there this woman was such an influence for me during getting into shoujo manga and she still is working her magic now and shikaj i love her as a protagonist i just it's so she's so relatable like i'm around her age like 28 I am and I found you know a very strong connection with her character and um, I just love the um, watching Shikaj that she's taking risks for herself and I am so excited for where this could end up because it's I feel like it's a little messed up as well like you know reverting back from 31 to 15 and I feel like the boy that she's associated herself with right now when she goes when she takes the drug and goes to a 15 year old I feel like the boy she's associated herself with, you know, like might get hurt or something. I don't want to spoil too much in this. I really don't. This is just such a different um, direction for Arena Tamura from her past works. And I love it. It works. And um, it's just it's just cuteness all over. And I'm so glad I have volume two. So I don't have to wait to at least read another volume. Um, but I'm probably gonna have to buy the rest. I think there's like five or six volumes of this. I think I'll have to check. I'll have to but yes Idle dreams. I just love this cover. Look at this cover mm, So good. So yeah, it, the readathon is over. I am really sad, but I am also really really tired right now. I am so tired Um, I honestly did not sleep that much last night because I was up for like um, till 2am watching a show and then starting Devil Line because the readathon I remembered it was on. So I am still feeling the repercussions of the tiredness catching up on me. So yeah, that will be the end of this vlog. I really hope whoever watches this, you enjoyed it. It was such a great day of reading just nothing but romance with what I could fit in even though I couldn't fit in all of my TBR which it's fine I can always read it you know anytime from hence from hence on so thank you so much Shay from Shay Geeks Out for doing this um or creating this readathon it's so fun I hope it sticks around for a very very long time and yeah, I just look forward to seeing what everyone else is reading. I've already found so many other unique people, other romance 
fake manga people to follow and yeah so I'm gonna hit the haystack all my linky links are down below in the description and I will see you guys in my next video which I have a very fun video planned coming up in the next week this was a great first readathon here's to more see you in the next video bye bye for now